So in this segment, we're going to be talking about this Telegraph article, A Conspiracy of Silence About the Impact of Mass Immigration Has Cost Britain Dear. I'm going to caveat this with a really important point, first of all, which is there's a separate article which talks about Patel, the Home Secretary, right? Um, I only learned about the information. Uh, there was like a, a cabinet breach by uh, Stephen Barclay, who uh, moaned about the lack of labour, right? So he's been reported to Simon Case, who is the senior civil servant, because the government, the he he's health secretary Stephen Barclay. He's complaining that there aren't enough nurses. Like it's hard to get visas for nurses, um, so they can come from abroad and work here. And he's saying we need to make it easier. But Pretty Patel saying no, because in my opinion, I think she's a bit racist. So Patel, her long-standing frustration at colleagues lobbying for more foreign labour is understood to have prompted the compilation of a 15-page document which contains details of every minister who has privately asked the Home Secretary to soften the immigration system. One who has seen the document says it spans virtually every cabinet member. So you are every, almost the majority of cabinet members saying we need to make immigration uh, visa rules easier so we can get people into work, right? Because at the end of the day, developed economies, you need people coming in, you know, you know, with the quote, unskilled labor, which is nonsense, because, you know, regardless of whatever job you're in, you need skills to do it. You can claim they're lower skilled or whatever, um, if you can train them up very quickly. But we need people with skills to come in, a particular set of skills, often the case. So we live in a world where Pretty Patel is saying no to making visa rules easier and is compiling a dossier on the ministers that have asked for help because she's a massive scumbag, in my opinion. And I thought this article was going to be a load of garbage. It's it's okay as far as the uh, Telegraph goes, because they mention, the author mentions, failure to plan for the extra millions of people coming to Britain is behind many of our current woes, which to an extent is true, um, especially under the Tories, because we've had you know a lot more people coming into the country, both EU and non-EU migrants, um, workers coming into the country. And obviously that does put a strain on social services. But the problem is, you know, people, especially people from the EU, have paid more into uh, for taxes than people from, you know, people that are native to Britain and people from non-EU. It's not competition. Point being is, had we planned this stuff out better, we would have a country where our infrastructure isn't crumbling, our hospitals aren't crumbling, our GPs aren't crumbling, our dentistry isn't crumbling, etc. If you see what I'm saying. Because, you know, birth rates were going to go up naturally anyways, but our failure to plan was the real problem. So he says, 20 years ago, Migration Watch UK said that Britain could expect more than 2 million uh, immigrants every 10 years for the foreseeable future unless it cur unless curbs were introduced. Now, the issue was, um, I think at the time we were part of the EU single market, which you couldn't do that. Sir Andrew, and now Lord Green, a former diplomat, and David Coleman, the Oxford University demographer, extrapolated on the net immigration figures since Labour took office in 97. The story was sufficiently dramatic to warrant front page news, but it was instantly denounced. But the Home Office said they would do more. As it turned out, the prediction was indeed wider the mark. The increase was far greater, um, especially as kind of more countries joined the EU. At the 2001 election, party leaders were required to sign a pledge promising not to play the race card. That sounds like a load of garbage. Um, it just doesn't make sense. You know, maybe they agreed they wouldn't talk about immigration, but I don't think that's true. Um, but again, I was a kid back then. Of course, immigration has been a divisive issue in British politics before. I mean, it always has been because this country is full of racists. They are less racist now um, than they were, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, but they still exist and they typically vote for right wing parties. I'm not saying everyone who votes for Tories are racist, but, you know, typically the ones who do vote for Tories might be a bit more racist than others. The ascension of the former Warsaw Pact countries to the EU and the UK's open door immigration saw a massive increase, even though the Labour government insisted it would have a little effect. It wasn't, it didn't have a massive impact. I don't think there was a ton of people coming over. The people who ignored this trend and castigated anyone who discussed it are the same people who today demand that more money spent on public services. Now, I think what the issue is, the people who often made these cases, right, may have used racist arguments especially when you had you know certain brexiteers saying i wouldn't want to live next door to a romanian person for example when you phrase things like that people are going to say you're a bit racist you're not worth listening to i think if you phrased it as look um there are you know the birth rates in this country are going up we're having more immigration from abroad what we need to do is really increase and really improve our public services um because the more people there are in this country the more you know people are going to need to use the doctors for example the hospitals the dentists the schools all of those things if you phrase it in a more positive way in a way that's not racist people might have listened to um you guys more I'm not saying the the author of this piece is racist but framing is important here guys their concerns were dismissed as bigotry. And again, I don't think that's true either. It depends how you framed it. You know, this is from middle class progressives that weren't competing with the new arrivals for jobs, schools and services. And yet we're struggling across the board when it comes to uh, 
jobs across the entire board. The population increase over the past 20 years is the fastest in history, makes sense, um, considering we haven't been at war, like, well, we haven't been invaded or had, like, a full-scale war. Obviously, there was the war in Iraq and um, Afghanistan, um, and obviously Kosovo, but those weren't, like, there wasn't you know, a massive population move to go into those wars or conscription. Um, he talks about the baby boomers, the, you know, etc. Of course, he has to. There is an argument for high levels of immigration when the population is aging um, to fill job vacancies, etc. Overseas nurses, doctors, teachers, and other professions to help support services the growing population needs. And again, we've spoken about how every sector needs help here. And Priti Patel has been kind of mooned at by loads of different um, cabinet ministers for her stance. With the extra hospitals, schools, GP surgeries, houses, transport links and others that are required for such a large amount of people have not been provided in sufficient quantity. And whose fault is that, pal? Whose fault is it that there aren't enough hospitals, schools, GP surgeries, houses and transport links? It's not the fault of the people who came to this country. It's the fault of the go -go 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 government which is why there's so much pressure on those services. Even the water shortages that we're facing today are partly a function of a population explosion in London and the South East fueled by immigration. The, the reason why we're facing water shortages is because the companies that are dealing with the water have been really bad. It's not the fault of an increase in people. It's the water companies not doing their jobs properly. Um, so to blame immigration in the South is just ridiculous. One point that Migration Watch was making in 2002 was that if no one talks about immigration, then no planning can be done for the inevitable pressures that it brings, which that, that's a fair point. It's true. If you don't acknowledge um, issues, you're never going to be able to solve them. You know, if you have a massive population increase, if you don't talk about that population increase, you're not going to deal with the consequence of it, which is people needing more services. But the problem is, it's the way you guys frame it. You know, you're blaming immigrants for the problems in um, the South when it comes to water, yet you're not acknowledging the problems that the privatised water system has made. There's no nuance with these people. That's the problem. Popular concern about immigration was behind the Brexit referendum, which is true. It was the racist that got it over the line. Even if it was more, it was often non-EU immigration to which they object the most, which doesn't make sense because now non-EU immigration has gone up much higher now. So... In, instead of getting rid of um, the people you wanted to get rid of, which was black and brown people, now you've got more of us. Hey. When the common market was established with free movement, it was never envisioned that millions of people would move to one European country and settle there. I, I don't think that's true. I think that's baloney. Um, I, th I don't know when um, you know the Costa del Sol started to exist with loads of British people moving to Spain and living there long term. But you know the idea that millions of people wouldn't move over to another country was ridiculous. Um, the progressives who now rail against those who supported leave should acknowledge their own complicity in pretending that immigration was not an issue. Now, now just just because, right, um, there are certain people who say, oh, you're racist for talking about immigration. I'm not one of those people. You have to acknowledge that when you have more and more people coming to the country, you have to do something when it comes to public services. You have to. Um, and, and so the government haven't done that. The government simply haven't done that. You know, successive governments here. Um, I'm not going to blame kind of Blair and Brown too much because... Things were a lot better back then, so I'm going to blame you know the Tories because once they came into power, everything went wrong. You know, immigration is actually higher now than when we have left the EU because we need people to come into the country. The problem is we're not using the tax money that we're getting from these people effectively. That's a key problem. You know, this year net immigration is likely to be higher than ever, and yet the issue has dropped down the list of voter concerns. Perhaps people really do feel the government is now able to exercise control through a points-based system. The problem is the points-based system isn't working. Because we need more and more people to come in. Again, this this article explains it really well there. It's a very long piece, but it's worth reading. Perhaps people do feel the government is now able to mention that, or maybe they have gotten yet they have yet to make the connection between the population growth and the lack of affordable housing and a broken NHS. But again, the real problem is it's the government that broke it. You know, had we had a government that said, "Look, okay, what the situation is this: there are more and more people coming to this country, okay, and obviously the population is booming now." What we need to do is we need to plan. We need to build more hospitals. And I'm talking the Tory 40 hospitals, which is a lie. We need to build more hospitals, build more schools, build more housing, etc. Um, we need to look at how we can make things more efficient. Maybe look at other countries that have huge populations. How do they run their cities? You know, how do they make their transport more efficient? Instead, what we did was we cut funding for schools, we cut funding for the NHS, we cut funding for affordable housing, we cut funding to all of these important services and um, other things so that when that population boom kept coming in because we do we do have a fairly I think liberal immigration system it was always going to happen the case that when things went wrong we'd blame immigrants why can't you go to school because some immigrants kids there why can't you go to hospital because immigrants are there blah 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 when it's simply you know it's simply the case that all of these things have been underfunded massively 
and that's a key problem we face. And now we have to deal with the consequences of voting for Tories for the last what twelve years. That's 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 it now. This country is dealing with the consequences of its own actions, and it doesn't like it. So what do we do? We do the the, the most old school British thing you can ever do: blame foreign people because you'll never take responsibility. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.